welcome to episode 24 of series 3 of Master League Story Mode. For those of you who caught Friday's stream, you will know that things are not looking quite as rosy at Ashton Gate, Free and Holloway's Bristol, as they were before that episode. Yes, we had a bit of a bad run, if I'm honest. The first two games, a difficult draw against Brighton that we should have won, we had the chances, and then a loss to Burton, who absolutely flew out of the blocks at us, Gagan pressed us into the ground, and Kwekwe, their striker, he just had his way with our defenders, with our centre-backs. Made them look like small, tiny children. It wasn't nice. And then, like a gambler chasing his, uh, chasing his losses, I decided, as it was a stream, to play a third game. And that one didn't go very well either, and we got a loss as well. So, at the beginning of that episode, or three games ago, we were well atop the championship. Now we've moved down into second, two points below Newcastle, and we're only four points off Villa. So any losses or draws now could be catastrophic. We don't want to get caught up in the playoffs. That was never the plan. You know, a few days ago, we were talking about what, how many games we might have to skip at the end. How long was it going to be until we were, you know, handed that promotion? But no, how things can change. So anyway, the only way to get around this is to get right back on the horse, and we're just going to have to plough through and get a win straight away. Uh, Cherie, we bought him or he didn't play very well. We want to stick with the uh, formation that's been doing so well for us. Roster in the midfield. That's where he does his best work. Still improving as well. Abraham on a blue arrow. He needs to do well in this episode because he had a bit of a struggle in the last one. So we're up against Huddersfield. They know they've got, they've got Palmer in the middle, a player that we've looked at, and two defensive midfielders. But much like Burton and all the other teams that we played in the last episode, this is a game we should be winning. So let's get into it. So back at Ashton Gate, this is a must-win game for Ian Holloway. Absolutely cruising as we were. He took our foot off the gas and for just a moment. And then suddenly, everything changed. And we're now scrapping for that automatic promotion space that could, we could well have already been promoted. Already automatically been promoted by this point. But no, we slacked off. I don't want to blame the stream. I don't want to blame, blame the... Uh, High strength alcohol I was drinking. It wouldn't be fair to blame any of those things. Roster into Dowell. He had chances to win at Abraham. The little back heel into Dicko. Dicko chip ball into Rossiter. Edge of the box. Jordan Rossiter goes back out to Angelino. Puts it in. Abraham's there with the header. Saved off the line. Oh, what a start that would have been. Oh, Matthews does well to keep it in. And then he's away from his man so well. Matthews with the ball in. It's a beautiful one. Couldn't get the header on it. And now Scannell. Matthews comes out to meet him. Doesn't win the tackle, but Pax won it here. And now we've got men forward. Who does he choose? Abraham's out on the wing. He's made a good bit of play. Into the box now, Tammy Abraham. Can he pull it back for Dicko? Oh, poor decision making. Probably would have rather have had Tammy in the centre there. Dowell over this one. Angelino hits it. Oh, he's hit it really well. Abraham with the rebound. And that's 1-0. Oh, Angelino. That was one off the training ground. As Matthew passed it on to his wing-back buddy, Archbishop of Banterbury. And he hit it with the right foot. And my gosh, that could have been a goal. But Abraham there to clean things up, grab the rebound. And that's the goal we needed. That was straight off the training ground. Angelino hit that really well. It was a good save. Good control from Abraham. Took that out of the sky with one touch. Finished with another. That's more like it. We did score a couple of goals during the stream. But that was during our 4-2 loss. At Burton, which is ridiculous. Huddersfield coming back at us now. Some good passing. That's an interesting ball into Naki Wells. His header, never going to be an issue for Mika. Marlon Pack sprays it out to Matthews. That's great. Oh, big tackle there, though. Oh, that's a great ball through to Naki Wells. Is he going to get there ahead of Mika? No, he's not. Pack into Matthews. We've seen that link up so many times. Matthews dribbles infield, though. Looking for options here. Rossiter out to Marlon Pack. Little scooped ball into Matthews. Now he's got options in the box. Low ball into Dicko. Yes. And Dicko puts us up by two goals at home to Huddersfield. We should be winning this game. But then we can say that about a lot of the games in the last episode. Didn't go so well. Matthews does well in the build-up. It was good. Passing play here. Simple stuff. Nice chip ball out from Pack. Matthews gets the head up. Sees the run across the box from Dicko. He's so fast. And great finishing from him. Where was this in the last episode? Angelino, ball to Dicko, can't get there, but now Angelino caught the wrong side of Van La Parry, steps inside, that's a nice ball into Wells, can he turn him out? He can, Mika makes the save, 
Beautiful stuff there from Mika. Here and Dow putting the pressure on. It's gone all the way back to Ward. Kicks it long. Looking for Scannell, but Matthews with a really strong header. And then packs a nice ball into, into Abraham, who turns and finds the ball. Looking for Dowell. Can he ship it? Oh, no. Dowell is fouled, though. By a combination of two Huddersfield defenders. It's a free kick in a dangerous position. This looks like two-pack territory to me. Marlon Pack has got a pretty good record this season. Gets over the wall, off the post, but Abraham's there to poke it in. Once again, Abraham, his attacking prowess and his reaction times is so high. As a natural-born goal scorer, that's exactly where you want him. Poaching those rebounds, poaching the drop ones, poaching the ones off the post there. Marlon Pack, so close. But Abraham happy to grab his second, and that makes it 3-0 here at Ashton Gate. Van Lepara into Naki Wells. He steps away really well, but Flint's in there. Then Matthews plays it back safely to Mika. He throws it out to Marlon Pack. All round good play there. Abraham gets the nod off to Dowell, who's fouled again in the centre. He decides to play on quickly, and Rossiter passes it out to Matthews. First time chip into Abraham. Oh, takes it down well. Couldn't get there to make the shot. Good flowing football here from Bristol City. Coming back strong after all the disappointments. It's low into Scannell. Oh, great tackle there from Pack. It's an early ball into Abraham. The back heel into Dicko's a good one. Couldn't get away from his man. 3 0 at the half. This is much better. More goals, more better play than we saw. More better play. Well, yeah, more better, more good play than we saw in the whole of the stream. Um, maybe it is that I just can't concentrate on the stream playing at the same time. It's not too different. I don't know. How I couldn't manage it, but still, this is much better. Ian Holloway's obviously had a good talking to with his players. Crisis talks to keep them in that automatic promotion race. We've come back with a 3-0 performance in the first half here. Much, much better. Nice play there. Van La Parra, ball into Naki Wells. He can turn and find Palmer. That's great play. Flint comes across, but Naki Wells makes it 3-1. Oh, dearie me. Well, that was good play from Naki Wells in the centre. Finding Casey Palmer. Two tricky, fast players in the centre. This was a nice turn from Wells. The reverse pass into Palmer. And he slips it through back into Wells. The uh, Bristol defence had switched off there. Abraham, can he win the header? He does, and he wins it really well. Now Dicko with the outside of the football into Kieran Dowell. Dowell with the finish. Kieran Dowell's been very quiet all game. But there he made a great run from that second striker role. And Dicko found him with the ball over the top. It's a reverse of fortunes. Dicko turns provider. Kieran Dow with a surprisingly calm finish. For someone not known for his goal scoring. But that was route one stuff. Abraham gets the knockdown. Ideally that would be Abraham. Knockdown into Dow and find the uh, crafted ball into Dicko. But the other way around works fine for me. And Dicko will be pleased to get on the score sheet today. After a string of average performances in the last few games. Great first touch. It was a simple finish in the end. Much better. 4-1 will do us. Triple substitution here as Kozak gets a rare run out as does Cherie coming on in second striker. Angelino's given a rest as well. He's been bombing up and down that left-hand side. He's very tired. Kieran Down out. Gets it. Ball in. Looking for Kozak with the header. He's put it wide. First touch of the game on his best foot, which is undoubtedly his head. That should have been a goal. Definitely should have been a goal. No problem height-wise for him. Lolly now into Moy. Can Huddersfield conjure something up in these last five minutes? That's better passing there. It's low finds Moy again, looking for Wells in the box. Oh, bit of a su suspect one there. Cherie, long ball over the top, looking for Kozak. Oh, Kozak's got there. Head of his man, Libor Kozak with the chip. We've not seen much from number 11 this season. He's barely had a start, but that was beautiful. He's obviously got a lot of talent in him. He's not been the right player for us this season. He was brought in as a backup, but with uh, Abraham back from injury and uh, not many chances given to Kozak. But that's really nice play. Lovely. He's a good finisher. I think he's 77 finishing, so you expect sort of cultured chip from him in that position. It's good to see him get a goal. Hopefully that adds a few hundred thousand to his asking price because we are going to be selling him if we can. But anyway, it's 5-1. Oh, that's it. That's it. Is that promotion? It must be. How is that possible? We're only four points behind. Well, anyway, we've done it. Yes. Or maybe that's playoff place. No. Oh, it must be. Must be. Or are we promoted? Excellent. Either way, very pleased with that. 
What a side this has been. What a side this has become. Mika, the keeper, had a great game today. I can be brown, I can be blue. There we go. That's for the uh, Mika fans out there. What great stuff. And we've really come back after that last episode. Showing people what Bristol City are really about. Abraham had a good goal. Kieran Dow played well. That was much, much better. No doubt about that. So, 5-1. Pretty comprehensive. And we're top of the league. Is that... Okay, so we're three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so we're seven points ahead of Villa. Yeah, that must be automatic promotion. It looks like we might end up top of the pile. Because Newcastle obviously slipped up in their last game. Nothing to worry about. Why was I even worried? I mean, at least it added a little bit of excitement, a little flavour of excitement to the end of the season. Roster continue to in improve. That's good. Angelino getting better as well. That's always good to see. Flinty's on the way down. We could do with another centre-back, if I'm honest. Let's quickly go back to the negotiations. We've got a few things to sort out in here. At the end of the last episode, we had a look at this, but never quite finalised it. So we've agreed with Angelino, a two-year contract. Definitely want to sign him, keep him. He's improving relatively well. He could do with a dramatic improvement. I feel like he's got more potential than that. He's still only 20 years old. Uh, Kieran Dahl, as we know, has been excellent. Leeds are interested, uh, but we're going to tie him down, I believe, to another two years. Yes. Much better. You're not going anywhere, Kieran. You've been too good for us to let you go. And of course, Daniel Amati, who in his deeper role, maybe doesn't appear to be doing much, but trust me, he gets stuff done. It might not show up in the highlights packages, but the fundamentals, as they say in basketball, Daniel Amati, more than, more than a leader. So uh, I think he's also agreed to two years as well. That's good, good negotiating there. Tied those guys down. Um, I think we're going to put Cherie on the transfer list. And Kozak as well. Don't know why he's not on there. And Engval as well. Sorry, mate. And sorry to all the Engval fans, but he's just not. He's not gonna. He's not gonna hack it in the Premier League with those stats. I'm afraid. Although he obviously always plays well above what you might imagine his ability to be. And Lee Tomlin, as you said many times, we want to get rid of him. No one interested though, which is odd. We also had some scouting come back. Uh, the main one out of that that looked interesting was Roberta. Roberta. Which is actually Nigel Roberta, which is almost reason enough to sign him, because Nigel is an excellent name for anyone. Especially a 19-year-old Dutchman who's uh, got some pace to him. Got some strength. 74 finishing. He's a good all-round striker. And 77 attacking prowess. It's always good to see. So we only get one free transfer, as we know. Uh, so I'm going to just sort of hold off on this. I think we've put him, put him on the list just so we don't forget about him. Um, but other than that, there's not much we can do at the moment. So there's no notification that we've won the league, but I think we definitely have, haven't we? Well, not won the league. Definitely, pre we want to win the league, don't we? So we'll play these last two games. It'd be a shame to come second, having not played them, losing the last two from simming them. So uh, can we get Dicko top scorer as well? Yeah, we can get Dicko three goals. I'm sure in the last two games. So let's get into the second game of this episode. Oh, Daniel Amati just signed a contract. He's not happy about it for some reason, but well, he's, he stays in. And we'll stick with the formation that we know and love. Dowell and Dicko. We want to get Dicko three goals today. A hat-trick from him would be good. That would put him in line. The top scorer. Up against Wigan. Adam LaFondra, Pez fan in real life. Probably one of the few true Pez fans playing at the top level. There's quite a few who are ambassadors for the game. Really, they're missing a trick by not getting LaFondra involved, although obviously he doesn't have the commercial pull of Ozil. He's definitely a big fan, and he's captaining Wigan today. Bristol City on the road, but we played so well in the last one, we should be able to get a result here. So it looks like automatic promotion has been assured. Now all we need to do is enjoy ourselves, play some good football, hopefully get Dicko the top scorer, and continue to improve on some of the youngsters. Angelino and Marty. And Kieran Dahl have just put pen to paper on new two-year deals, all three of them, signed up to the Ian Holloway project. The Premier League is going to be interesting with those three. Those three definitely start for me in the Premier League. We do need to improve in other areas, but they are, they're nailed on for me. And Marty, such strength to get away from Jacobs. And he tries to find the ball down the line into Dicko. Oh, he steps away so well there. Dicko looking for the ball into Dowell. Kieran dowell has got there. His finish is saved really well by the feet of the Wigan goalkeeper. 
once again we come out of the blocks firing. We always get a chance in the first few minutes. And that one could have been put away. Great work by Dicko. Oh, poor pass there. Oh, but back's caught in possession by Lafondra. Little back heel. That's a lovely little looped ball out. Angelino's there. Doesn't deal with it. Jacobs into the box now. Good effort from Jacobs. Mika sees it wide. I think he had that covered. Jacobs finds Oh, Lafondra back out to power. Angelino closing him down now. He finds Jacobs again. This is great play. Perkins gets the shot. And he gets it badly wrong. But Wigan looking dangerous here in the early moments of the game. Jacobs looking good. And he's got the better of Angelino again. Angelino I think just, just did enough to put him off there. That's a great clearance from Flint. Dicko lays it off to Abraham. No, not Abraham. Dicko now. Can he find Abraham in the box? That was not the right ball for that situation. And Bogdan able to clear easily. Missed an opportunity there. That was a good break. Burn now down the right-hand side. That's a lovely ball in. Amartes there just does enough to put off Lafondra, who heads wide. Jacobs inside to Perkins. Lafondra, nice chip ball out to power. Magnuson comes over to make the tackle. Does well. Doesn't manage to win the ball back. No power. Edge of the box to Jacobs. Angelino, huge tackle. Still, we can't clear it. Oh, it's a good effort from the edge of the D there from the Wigan player. Amati sliding in. Maybe did enough to put him off. Perkins, low ball into Lafondra who spins Flint. Flint does just about enough to stay with him. Then the pass isn't good enough to find anyone in a Wigan shirt. Now Magnuson can play it out to Angelino. He's been very quiet so far. He steps inside. Still Angelino here. That's a nice pass into Pack. He turns away from one, but Jacobs, running back on defence, wins it back. But Dicko's there, wins that. Ball over, looking for Dowell again, as in the last game. Dowell couldn't take it down this time. Flung himself at it, though. Really wanted that. Wild shot in a bit of space out here on the right, but Matthew steaming through, wins that back. Abraham, ball inside to Dowell. Little reverse chip ball into Dicko. Still Dicko. Oh, can't get it away. That pass, absolutely sublime. Rossiter, huge crunching tackle in the midfield. But once again, we can come away with it. Oh, Flint's lost Lafondra there. Magnuson coming across to cover. Dicko lays it into Dowell. Still Kieran Dowell, but that's half time. Well, disappointing half, really. Nil nil from the uh, championship leaders here. Away from home, we've only been allowed one shot on target, which is one more than Wigan, but they definitely had the ball more than us in this first half. I think we can do better, though. No, can't get it free, can't get it clear. Great tackle by Rossiter. He does win the ball well in the centre. He's not a big lad, but he can. Oh, Dowell. The preemptive slide tackle there was brutal. It's about three men sliding in at once. Kieran Dowell, an attacking midfielder's life in this version of Pez is not an easy one. Once he received the ball in this position, look at this. Smash! With only ten minutes to go here. We're going to coming forward. A nil-nil draw would be really disappointing at this point, especially after such a great performance in the first game of this episode. Marty, great play, wins that back. And now Abraham, can he find the ball through to Kieran Dowell? He can. It's Kieran Dowell. Can he win the game here now? Kieran Dowell into the box. Pokes it with the left foot. That's the wrong decision, Kieran. Every other time he would have gone for a pass. And I think Dicko might have been on there. And as the game comes to an end, it's Will Grigg. Oh, good tackle there. That was not the ball I was looking for. Well, nil-nil. Away at Wigan, who are a difficult side to play against. It's not good enough, really, but who cares? We're going to the Premier League. It's done. Ian Holloway's first season is a successful one. That game, not his best. But, hey, we've been in a bit of dodgy form at the moment. There's no doubt about it. When you're so significantly far away at this age, stage of the season, players are going to slack off, and they definitely did in the last three games before this episode. But hey, we're through, so everything else is immaterial at the moment. Roster, as I said, 5.5. Is he good enough for the Prem? Do we need to be looking for a central midfielder as well? I think I know one we could look at. Uh, but let me know what you think. So, how did Newcastle do? Newcastle, they drew as well. Still top of the league by a point. Great stuff. It's in our hands now on the final day to win the league. What a great end to this first season that would be for Ian Holloway. 
We're going to have to get to that in the next episode, though, because I'm not going to make it three games per episode as a rule. That was just a special, stupid decision for the last episode. Anyway, yeah, so looking pretty good. Uh, one player that I might consider as a Rossiter replacement or upgrade, depending on what you think about Rossiter, is uh, Davis from Everton. We know he's playing really well at the moment in the Premier League. Might be able to sign him, I don't know. Maybe potentially a loan signing would work for him. That might be an interesting interesting choice. Uh, McNair from Sunderland as well. That's one that we could look to bolster our defence with. Um, other than that, there's nothing really in the in this list that's particularly interesting for me. Other than Roberta, obviously the free agent that we're almost certainly going to sign. I'll, I'll leave off just in case a better free agent appears. Uh, yeah, let me know what you think about the uh, central midfield issue, potentially. Are they strong enough? Does this central midfield pairing of Rossiter and Pack That should do for the Premier League, right? 75 overall rated each. They've both got decent ball winning. They're both good all-round players. Rossiter's passing maybe doesn't get used enough. He does lose out when it comes to physical contact. Only 68. He could get bullied in there. That's my only issue. Let me know what you think. So, much better episode. We are going up. Ian Holloway in the Premier League again. Bristol City. First time ever in the Premier League. It's going to be a massive, massive second season for Ian Holloway. And I'm really looking forward to it. In the next episode, we can play our final game. Try and secure that top spot. Should be ours. And then we can start planning for the Premier League. And that's always a lot of fun. So, uh... I don't think it's going to be a live stream this Friday. That wouldn't work very well for a Premier League planning episode. But there might be another one soon. Maybe on a Monday. Hey, who knows? I'm probably not going to do live streams of Become a Legend because there's just so much downtime in that that it wouldn't work. But I am enjoying the streams. So there will be more. Not this Friday, but soon. I'll see you in a bit.